Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a quick look through the international racing that's taken place in the last few weeks and also look ahead to further engagements down the line. We've got some very good racing that has been and is coming up in the near future so we'll talk through it now starting with the Pegasus which was run at Gulfstream on Saturday and life is good putting a ridiculous performance to win that. That was probably one of the best flat performances I've seen in a very long time. He showed some electric early gate speed and set some solid fractions and you was thinking at one point is he going to be able to keep it up but Arad Ortiz Jr didn't have to get too serious at all and he coasted home to beat Nick's go into second who probably did underperform in reflection because he was very close to finishing third and he was way better than the horses in behind and it was his last start before a tie and he had a big big run in the Breeders' Cup Classic and I think he might have still been feeling the effects of that however good he was in the Breeders' Cup Classic but looking forward life is good is some horse I put him up as the best horse in the world over the flat and I'm not sure if people agree with that because some people do look down on American racing compared to racing back home but this is a serious horse and I think he's definitely one to look out for in the future and we'll get on to talking about where we might see him next in a couple of minutes time. Over at Maidan their season started and Godolphin have been in very good form they've been farming races but I think you'd expect that with the firepower that they have from side bin Sugar and Charlie Appleby. They've got loads of good horses and quite a few have taken well from heading from England over to the UK, starting with Siskany, who you'll remember won the early cup at Newmarket, that handicap. That was an impressive performance, but he's definitely stepped forward since he won his first start out in Maidan by five lengths and he stepped up in trip from a mile and a half to a mile and three quarters and I think that's going to be the making of this horse. He definitely saw it out very well under James Doyle and I think he's definitely one to keep an eye on whilst he's out in Maidan. We've also seen Naval Crown who won a group two just in the end. He finished second in the Jersey Stakes. A very good performance behind Creative Force who's definitely a very good horse and another one he's definitely stepped forward for getting some sun on his back out in mid and he won a group two and it'll be interesting to see where we could see him later on in the carnival i'm not sure if he's up to winning a big group one out there but he's definitely group two standard and might just done a big race in a group one i've also seen star safari who's had a couple of wins out here now he excels out here he won a listed race it was a brilliant ride by William Buick. He looked like he was going nowhere and was in a lot of trouble but he finished very strongly on the inside rail to win by half a length and he's one who excels at this intermediate trip and definitely one to keep an eye on. Just a note for Maurice Diamond who ran second for Roger Fell after being poor on his debut in mid and you often see that some horses do take time to adjust and the first done isn't great but he ran huge under Danny Tudup to finish second in that listed race and picked up a very nice prize indeed so Connections will be very happy and if you can back that up he might just be a nice money spinner for Connections of this horse. And we're going to move on to the future now of big races, big international races and we're going to start off with the Dubai World Cup which could be an absolute smash up between two American speedsters in Life is Good and Hot Rod Charlie. Now both of these are very good horses in their own, own right but I think if life is good turns up we could see some performance and I think this could just get him the respect of the full racing world because he's done it against American horses. Now coming out to Maidan in Dubai he's going to have to take on horses from all over the world but I definitely think he's up to winning a race like the Dubai World Cup and picking up a lot of prize money for connections. Moving on to the Dubai turf and I think it's going to be interesting to see what English horses go out there. If you think of horses like Lord North, John Gosden obviously knows how to send one out to the Middle East and win if you think back to Mishriff last year. So the trainer knows how to win a race like this and also a pile driver who's ran very well in Hong Kong. That was a brilliant performance to finish second, I think it was in the end. He's becoming a bit of a globe chopper now, globe trotter, and it'll be very interesting to see him. He's around eight to one in the betting. I'm not sure if he would turn up, but if he will, you'd expect him to be shorter than eight to one. He does have a lot of class, this horse, and very good form in England and abroad as well. And moving on to the Shima Classic, 
which comes in March as well. It'll be interesting to see if Godolphin can keep up the form. If And it'll be interesting to see what horses they send over from England for this. If you think Yabir, who was very good over in America at the Breeders' Cup. And I think it'll be very interesting to see if he can do it out in Maidan as well. He's a very good horse on his day and it's going to be interesting to see how Charlie Appleby and Side Bin Sir Arthur Godolphin keep up because they're in very hot form at the minute and if they can keep this up I think they'll be a very dominant season for Godolphin both in England and for the rest of the world. So that sums up this video guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below for which international horse you're looking forward to seeing in the rest of the year.